Hi, this is episode four, week number four, day 28 of what is now the 35 day great root race. Because as you can see, the basal starts are so big after just 28 days that we're gonna have to transplant them out of these root riot starter trays much sooner than expected. This will also be our third and final feeding before we transplant. And the theme of the episode is humility and humidity. And even though the next episode, episode five, is still the review and comparison episode, we're gonna look at the plants and the roots to see what's changed. To see if increasing the Clonex solution from five mils to 10 mils last week made a difference. And because we're going to be transplanting them next week, we're also going to have to start leaving the Mondi humidity domes half on, half off of the Root Riot starter trays so the plants can start hardening off. So keep watching and maybe you'll learn something. I hope I do. And this is a seven week, five video series where we grow basil from seed. That way we can test and compare the products I sell in my hydro store. And so we can finally once and for all figure out not only what works best, but how best to use the products. And while later in the video, we'll be mixing nutrients, watering, feeding, and comparing plant growth. For now, let's start with an introduction. Hi, I'm the Grow Boss, and this is my hydro store, where I get to meet lots of growers and listen to their stories, which is exactly how I wrote my book, The Grow Book and Equipment Guide, because for years now, I've been collecting and writing down all the questions my customers ask. And if at any time during this video, you want to find your closest hydro store or where you can buy my book or any of the other products you see in this video. Just click the opportunity button when it pops up or go to everyhydrostore.com. And now that you know that, let's catch you back up on what's already happened before we go on. In episode one, day one, the theme was promises and temptations. And I introduced you to all the equipment we'll be using and the rules of the great root race. And in episode two, week two, day 14, the topic was root booster or root buster. And in episode three, week four, day 28, the overwatering episode, we fed for the second time. And we took our first look at the differences in growth rates between the products. And we also decided, even though we were very eager not quite yet to remove the Mondi humidity domes, not to turn on the other two bad boy T5 lights, and not to increase the Clonex solution from 5 mils to 10 mils. And who knows, we may do that in this episode. But before we decide that, let's do some chores first and take a look at the plants. Listen, it's always the same thing. I promise you. There are no tricks to growing cannabis, and while I water and feed these trays, trays one through three, our control trays, I want to take that time to also comment on a few things, because my experience as a store owner is really what sets me apart from the other videos, right? And what sets my book apart from those other books, because I read them all before writing mine, and I got to tell you, they got it all wrong. How do I know? Well, I read them all when I bought my first hydro store and it was immediately apparent that there was a serious disconnect because the information in the books had nothing to do with the questions my customers were asking me. And that's why I like doing these videos because I learn things every time I do this, just like you get better with every harvest. For instance, the first time I did the great root race, I killed 1200 basil starts because we didn't add any food. We only watered with the products we were comparing. This time though, you can see we got much farther, right? Because last time everything died, just like they did in tray one. But this time, they grew so big, I had to shorten the production schedule of the video by two weeks. And I bet if I ever had to do this a third time, I would be even better at it. Know what I mean? 
That's why I always tell you guys to relax when it comes to your first grow. Relax. You don't have the experience to know anything. So don't worry about anything. Don't worry about getting everything just right. And instead, try to understand that this is going to take multiple efforts and attempts to master. And all you can truly do the first time is try not to waste money buying the wrong equipment and hang on. Now, let's start the lesson for this video, Humility and Humidity. This episode is called Humility and Humidity. And perhaps the best place to start is with one of those things you always hear me say, and that's this. You can micro-focus on whatever your big brain thinks is important. For some of you, it's spending thousands on the perfect light spectrum. For others, it's spending thousands on the perfect environment. Some of you think it's the nutrients, or the perfect PPMs, or the perfect pH, or the perfect humidity. And for others, you come into my store and tell me all about your friend's secret sauce. Because that's what your big brain decided after 30 seconds of internet research. And yet the truth is, unless you're in Club 15, none of it matters. And the best part is, whatever it is you think you thought up, you always think you're the first one to think that shit up. But after a while of working on the other side of the counter, I can tell you whether or not you're going to succeed or fail just by the type of person you are. Because there's nothing new under the sun. And because there are only so many things for your big brain to micro-focus on, it was inevitable that I would see it all. And I'm not telling you this just to make you feel stupid. I told you all that to prove the point that I already know what's going to happen because I've seen it so many times. In fact, I've been doing this so long now, I can tell what products you're going to buy and what mistakes you're going to make just by the car you're driving, how fast you talk, and your general appearance. That's how many times I've watched growers get started, and that's how many times I've watched them fail. But then, I'm the guy that wrote the book, right? Now, let's get back to our chores, and we'll talk a little bit more about humility and humidity later in the video. Okay, these are trays four, five, six, and seven, and these two are the great white trays, and these two are the orca trays. And if you remember the difference between them is that we only use Clonex solution and great white in tray four, but in tray five, we also added the mycochum. And the same thing here with six and seven. Only this time we use Clonex Solution and Orca in this tray, and we use Clonex Solution Orca and the Myco Chum in the same mix for tray seven. And just look at the roots on all of them. It's crazy when compared to the roots in tray two that just got the Clonex Solution. And they're even bigger in the trays that got the Myco Chum. Now, let's get back to the lesson humility, and humidity. Okay, I was telling you about the paths to success and failure, and even though there's no one right way to do things, as with any hobby, there are most certainly a set of trials and tribulations and a learning curve every new grower has to go through. And that's what my videos are about going over those failure points because if you can just avoid failure by definition you'll be successful and while you always hear me say too much light too much water and too many nutrients are the number one problems the reality is there are a lot of little mistakes that growers can make without realizing it and for no other reason than nobody explained it to you so that's what we're going to do in this episode I'm going to explain one of those little things you always hear about, and it's the perfect humidity. For instance, you'll hear people all over the internet pick a number and tell you that's the perfect humidity. And usually that number is right around 40%. But I ask you, when you look outside, is the humidity always 40%? Is the temperature 
always the same? And yet, all these people have the balls to tell you there is a perfect number when I can 100% assure you that there is not. And here's how come I'm so sure. You know how everything in nature has a natural checks and balance. It's always present, and if you know what to look for, it's no different when growing cannabis. Because not only is there no perfect humidity or temperature, humidity and temperature are both directly related to each other. And that's why there's no cold, humid air, because cold air can't hold the moisture. And it's why the poles are the driest places on Earth, why the tropics are the wettest, and yet plants still grow in both places, and at all elevations, and in all salinity conditions. What that really tells us is this. There is no perfect temperature and no perfect humidity. And once we understand that, perhaps we can begin to ask the correct question about humidity, and it's this. What's a good humidity for my situation? And that's something I can answer, because if you have bugs, you're gonna to wanna to raise the humidity and temperature. And if you have mold, you're gonna to wanna to lower them. And that's because in nature, there are always checks and balances. And heat and humidity are as much the checks and balances to bugs as dry cold air is the checks and balance to mold and mildew. So now that you know that, you tell me, what's the perfect humidity? The one right in the middle, so you get both bugs and mold? That's why I tell you, there's no perfect anything when it comes to growing cannabis. But that's not all you need to know about humidity. So let's get back to our chores and we'll talk more about humidity and clones later. Now, let's take a look at tray eight and nine. And these are the roots by Humboldt nutrient trays and the green fuse tray. And again, roots by Humboldt nutrient and green fuse are rooting hormones designed to trick the plant in pro into producing more roots. And again, remember, when we judge this product, we have to consider that they have had less time to work their magic than say the microbes or the CO2 trays. But that doesn't matter. Check out these roots. Look at how much bigger, look at how much bigger they are than the tray that just got Clonex Solution. And that's exactly why you are always going to use a rooting hormone like Roots by Humboldt Nutrients or Grain Fuse because it doesn't get much better. And while I finish watering and feeding these trays, you can go back to the lesson, humidity and humility. Okay, now that you get the idea that there's no perfect humidity or temperature, and that high and low humidity days are as much a part of the healthy life cycle of growing plants as anything else. And now that you are more open to the idea that there is no perfect anything, let's focus a little more on how humidity relates to seeds and clones and why and when to use a Mondi humidity dome like we're using. Because just like bugs hate it humid and mold hates it dry, seeds and clones feel the same way about humidity too. So let's start with the whys first. And to do that, all we have to do is ask, what's the difference? between starting a seed and a clone. And basically, that comes down to two things. Clones are older, but seeds have roots. And that's exactly the way to think about this. See, a, a clone doesn't have a root. So if you remember back in episode three, when we went over roots and how they work, it turned out that the root is responsible for absorbing water and the root hairs for absorbing nutrients. Which means if you have a clone, with no root, the imminent danger is from dehydration. And since we also know that plants transpire or sweat from their leaves as part of the photosynthesis process, the way to protect a cutting is to increase the humidity in her environment until her stone was closed, or at least decrease the release of water, and that happens somewhere around 70%. 
That's why you don't need rainstorm conditions under the Mondi Dome. Because even one drop of water anywhere in the dome means there's more than enough humidity. That's also why you see clones with their leaves snipped in half. Growers do that to slow the transpiration rates. And now that you know why clones, clones need domes until they're cuttings with roots, do you also understand why seeds don't necessarily need domes? That's right, because the tap root from a seed can immediately start absorbing water as soon as it pops. And now that you know all that, you're probably wondering why, why I'm starting seeds under Mondi domes now, right? And you can keep wondering about that while I finish up my chores. Now this is tray 10, and this tray hasn't pressed since day three. And just like you can see, the tops in the green pad tray are not as green as the tops in the Clonex Solution tray. It's just as obvious that the roots in the Clonex Solution tray are not as big as the roots in the green pad tray. And I'll get into why that is at the end of the video. But for now, just look at how much bigger the roots are when you add green pad CO2 to the starts. Wow, check that out. And now let's water and feed the mystery trays 11 and 12. Okay, these are trays 11 and 12, our mystery trays. And while I'm not prepared to reveal what's in them yet, I do want to show you the starts and their roots because this tray, tray 11, is probably overall the best tray. And while tray number 12 started off strong, uh, fortunately, it doesn't seem to be doing so well now. And while that may be a little bit of a hint to what I'm testing in here, for now, and before we end this episode, I would like to point out one more thing about determining the correct amount of nutrients, and it's this. Remember how we used 5 mils Clonex solution for the first feeding, and then 10 mils for the last two? And do you remember how I always say the correct amount of nutrients is the least amount you can get away with? Well, the question you guys always ask is how to determine the correct amount. And I just want to point out some clues you can use to determine some things about the plants. And to demonstrate, I'm going to use tray 2, the Clonex Solution tray, and tray 10, the Green Pad tray. And remember, they both get the same amount of Clonex Solution and that the only difference between these two trays is the CO2 from the Green Pad Junior in this tray here. And I showed you earlier in the video that the Clonex Solution tray had bigger, greener plants, but that the Green Pad tray had bigger roots. So, why is that? And do they have anything to do with each other? And what does it tell us about the plants? Well, it turns out the yellowing is specifically caused by the increase in growth rates from the CO2 the Green Pad Junior is generating. And that's because in the photosynthesis equation, there are only three things, right? Light, water, and CO2. And we know what happens if you add more water or more light, you kill your shit, right? So the only thing left is CO2. And I think this green pad tray clearly demonstrates that point because it may not have the most roots or the most plant canopy, but it does have more roots than control tray number two, the Clonex Solution control tray, while using the same amount of Clonex Solution. See my point? The tops turned yellow because they consumed their fixed supply of nitrogen at a faster rate. Could I have solved this by adding more Clonex Solution food with more nitrogen in it? Hell yes! And that's my point. See, one argument we could make is that if we doubled the Clonex Solution in tray 2, we would have got twice the growth. And I think we both know the answer is no, because where would it stop? Could we, for instance, then double-double it and get four times the growth? Could we triple-double it and get some even more growth. And again, I think we both know the answer is no, right? But let's say we doubled the dose and got a 10% increase in growth rate. Is that 10% growth 
worth the added expense of doubling the nutrients? Well, that probably depends on what you're growing, uh, but in general, the answer is no. And that doesn't even factor in the question, could we use less? For instance, could we use half the amount and achieve the same result? Because now we're talking about lowering the operating cost of a fixed production operation. And I think we can all agree in a business-based economy, it's all about being the lowest cost producer. That's why everyone's afraid of high quality cannabis being grown outdoors, right? Because if you grow it outdoors, they'll be the lowest cost producer in the market and they'll set the market price. And now that we're thinking in terms of those trade-offs, let's go back to trade two and 10. And now think about what other information we could do deduce from what we see. And I think it's this. If the green pad tray ran out of Clonex solution from just the addition of a little CO2, and since the first sign and symptom of a problem was the nutrient deficiency, then I would like to suggest that the dose we were giving tray number one was in fact correct, unless another force in the law of minimums acted upon it, like changing the quantities of the inputs to photosynthesis, like light, water, and CO2. See, these look great, but we added a little CO2 here in tray 10, and now they don't look as great, but the roots look better. See what I mean? Now, could we have added more Clonex solution food to the green pad tray and resolve the issue? Yes, of course, but the name of the video series is the Great Root Race. Not the great grow plants race, right? That's why I'm willing to sacrifice plant growth for root growth to make that point. Now, in the next series, the great grow race, when we transplant the starts from the Clonex solution tray into smart pots and grow them out under different lights with different nutrients, then yes, that will be important. But the whole entire reason I have spent the last six months writing and shooting and editing all these videos comes down to this one specific point. No, I don't really have anything for you. I was just feeling a little dramatic. But <laughs> if there was a lesson to be learned, it's that all these products work and deliver on their promises for explosive root growth. When your plants are healthy. Let's do a quick review here before we finish this episode. First, that not only is there no perfect humidity, there is no perfect temperature. In fact, just the opposite is true. A wide range of both are required as high humidity is the nemesis of bugs, just like cold dry air is to molds and mildews. Second, seeds have roots and clones don't. And because of that, seeds require different environmental conditions which brings us to why I'm using Mondi domes over seeds, even though they have roots. And basically, it comes down to everything I've been telling you in these videos, in my books, in my No More Grow More cards, and in my store. Growing anything, whether that be indoors or out, is a gray area. And since historically, most of us chasing that cannabis money have been 18 to 49 year old males, a demographic not particularly known for patients or living in the gray area as their defining characteristics. Which is why I also tell you that 85% of growers fail. Because the real number is probably closer to 99%. And for no other reason than aggressive 18 to 49 year old males try to rush the process because that's the type of people that chase cannabis money. The problem is cannabis can't be rushed. And just like anything, there can't be two winners. And there's no way a delicate little slow growing cannabis plant can compete with an 18 to 49 year old male. And so 99% of growers fail or, or are going to fail before they even start just for that reason. And I know I say 85 in all my videos and then all my books and stuff, but it's late. I'm tired, and this is the end of a long video. So just between us, because you're still watching, I will tell you a little secret. If I put 99% in my books, you'd laugh at me. So I lied, and I wrote it as Group 85 and Club 15. But the truth is, it's really Group 99 and Club 
And it's always been that way. And I've worked and owned multiple hydro stores over the last decade. And I'll tell you one more thing while we're here. If you watch my videos and read my books, I never once tell you how to grow. Technically, all I do is help you avoid the problems. And if you can just do that, shit, if you can just do that, the cannabis will grow itself, right? Has been for 400 million years. Okay, let's finish up this video with what to expect from the next video. And while I'm waiting until the next episode, episode five, week five, day 35, the final episode, before we really get into comparing the root growth rates and then transplanting, I thought I would give you a quick peek at the early results. Now, while I comment a little bit more about why I waited this long to crack the Mondi domes, and I didn't increase the light or crack the domes until now because it's always the temptation to do more when everything is going well, isn't it? Because you figure if things are going great, more would make it even more greater, right? But I can assure you, it doesn't. And when the plants want more, they'll tell you. You never have to guess because it's a plant. And you can always add more nutrients, more light, and crack the dome later. So what's the rush to do it now? When everything looks so good. Remember, it takes 10 times longer to fix something than it does to destroy it. And the, hard, the hardest part about growing cannabis is not growing the cannabis. It's the patience necessary to wait for the cannabis to grow because there is nothing you can do or buy that's going to speed up the process or magically turn your weed into something the world has never seen before. It is what it is, and it will never be anything more than that. And I suspect that's why 85% of you fail, because you make this into something it isn't, instead of keeping it simple and keeping this about the plants. And all these starts, they look good, don't they? Before we end the show, here's a couple of words for the sponsors. When you go shopping, don't forget to get Gorilla Tents if you want the most hardcore, heavy-duty tents on the market. And Mondi Humidity Domes for the perfect environment so you can start the perfect clones. And when it comes time to feed those clones, you're going to want to do that with Clonex Solution, the perfect food for your perfect little cuttings. And of course, all these little seedlings are being supplied fresh CO2 from Green Pad Junior CO2 Generators, the perfect CO2 for your perfect clones. And don't forget to buy Great White Microbes for explosive root growth. Finally, something that keeps its promise, Great White Microbes really does blow your shit up. And don't forget, all this growth is happening under Nickel City Bad Boy 4 foot 4 bulb T5 lights. Okay, thanks for watching. I'm the Grow Boss, and if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions between now and then, you can always schedule a consult with me by clicking here. Trust me, I know how much you've spent and how much time you have invested in this. And I promise, I can fix your garden in about an hour. So call me before you quit.